Hello and welcome to my little video on how to annotate objects using polygons with Atoms. First of all, you would have to download Atoms, of course. Um, you can do so with a snapshot, and I recommend you using the Atoms annotator snapshot. And if you use the zip file, then you get all the flows that you need, and you can do that for the major platforms like Linux, Mac, and Windows. All you need to have installed is Java 11 or upwards. Right, I've already done that and extracted that here in that directory. And if we're looking into the bin directory, <coughs> you can see that there's a start GUI batch file or a start GUI shell script, which you can use to launch Atoms, the user interface. Okay, since we want to annotate objects and polygons using polygons, we need a data set that we can use. And for that purpose, I'm just reusing an existing one where I'm just going to discard any other annotations. Um, I will be using one from our user-friendly deep learning project and it is a dash cam video data set from Oxford University and we're downloading the image segmentation data set here which is a small one, it's just 51 megabytes with about 700 images. I'm going to download that here. a little while <coughs> all right I'm gonna extract that here all right and you can see that there's basically for each JPEG there's a PNG which contains the image segmentation annotations which we can ignore so I'm just gonna delete those so I won't interfere in selecting them Okay, now we can basically start up items. Takes a few seconds. And then from the menu, we select the flow editor. And then we load the Atoms Imaging Annotate Objects flow into the flow editor. A little description on top how you can annotate images and how you actually draw bounding boxes or polygons and you can either run the flow by clicking on the blue triangle here in the toolbar or using run from the run menu starting that you can select the directory where you want to um, where your data is located of images that you want to annotate you can either do bounding boxes or object shape with this particular flow and in this case we want to do object shape but the minimum pixel distance that determines how fine-grained your polygons will be the smaller the pixel distance um, the better but on the other hand also the larger the annotations as in object labels since this is dash cam video we're just going to use car, cyclists and pedestrians, so this is a blank separated list. Depending on image size you might want to change your font. Uh, if it's a very large image you might want to increase the font size so you can actually see the labels properly and where the labels are being placed. So this one does it at the top center of the bar bounding box of the annotation. Right, we're going to select a subset of images. You can do a search down here if you want to. <coughs> okay, now we have our interface. Um, on the top left you see basically the three labels that you've chosen. Up here, um, zoom controls. Um, zoom in, zoom out, fit, no zooms or original size. You can also change to the brightness if it's uh, very dark images. Uh, sometimes helps with doing things. And in this case, we are doing shapes. So in this case, I'm gonna start here with the cyclist. So I'm just gonna start left click and then basically draw the outline of the cyclist very badly because I'm just using my mouse rather than 
a tablet which would be recommended especially since after a while you're probably most likely gonna get RSI and a sore wrist so you can basically do that now for every single object in here and as soon as you let go of the left mouse button it basically closes that polygon in case you've done an incorrect one you can just control left double click into an object that you want to remove and then select the ones that you want to remove so sometimes there could be several ones overlapping potentially and multiple could show up so you select like the one that you want to remove if that was incorrect you can always use the undo and redo buttons up here i'm just gonna go through annotating a few more cars here very badly i'm sure you'll be doing a better job compared to me um, just do one there one over there oh, that was really bad so i'm just gonna remove that one again there's bad and there's bad okay so that looks good um so over here you can always see sort of like um that's basically all the objects that are actually being um, edited and whatnot. Don't worry about the index if it's sometimes prefixed with a zero or not, it's fine. Um, so each object basically has um, x, y width and height, which is the bounding box, plus in this case polygon x and y. Okay, okay, we have another cyclist here. Quickly draw the outline here. Yeah, roughly. <laughs> ka, 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 and another car. And we have a pedestrian here, still waiting in the lights. Right. And so on. If you don't want to um, edit an image, just cancel that and then that proceeds without storing any notations if you um, if you're unhappy with what you have done um, just cancel that um, and by canceling base it doesn't save anything you can go through and go through in case you have selected a lot more images than you want to annotate you can basically then just stop the flow and of course you can re-annotate those images um, you can go through again and then just select either the next bunch or not and here you can see you've basically have your existing annotations and if you wanted to for instance um, adding a new label like building or road and things like that so you could do that then as well um, or remove things and then basically enrich your data set as you go and you can do that as many times as you want to stop there I'm gonna go in the data set here so I've done two images and you basically will see in your image directory that not only the JPEG will be in there but also one with a dot report extension and this is really just a text file in the Java properties file format which contains basically all your object annotations there which items reads and then displays or if you modify them and saves them again once you've done enough of those annotations um, because I mean Adams format is not being used by any of the deep learning frameworks you can then convert them into the appropriate format and for that you can use our Y annotations framework which has come out of the user-friendly deep learning project that we've been working on for the last few years it is Python library that allows you to convert various annotation formats from to and you, it also allows you to perform processing um, on that um, in that pipeline conversion pipeline that you're creating there you could for instance um, drop certain objects that are too small too large remove certain labels that you don't want to have in your data set for instance you have a very richly annotated data set and you just want to build a model 
on for instance cars but you can completely ignore any pedestrians or cyclists in that or you could then have a cyclist spotter for instance for an add-on for a dash cam so that actually could alert the driver that there are actually cyclists on the road yeah so um, installation is actually quite easy so the python library so you can just use pip to install it um, you can install everything together it's a bit large because there's tensorflow included in that as well or you just download and um, install the individual modules which you want to convert from so we have atoms annotations so you would want to have the y atoms y annotations atoms um, plugin and if we're converting it for instance for detectron uh, we would want to have the ms coco um, data set format and for that you use the y annotations coco assuming you've installed all that um, you can look at some of the um, examples your know, format conversions um, here from Adams to Adams Coco, for instance. For that, you're using Y notations status um, command line utility with subcommand convert. And we're converting it from Adams object detection. Um, and in the input directory is basically where my annotations are. And then um, in this case, I'm also removing all annotations that are only five pixel height or width wise and then I convert that to Coco and this particular example I also add a particular license and I don't want to output the images there however in our case most cases you probably want to add the um, images as well one other great thing about the library is you can split the data set so whilst you have one large pool of annotations you can then the output format uh, and to split that basically into subsets so for instance train and test in this case with an 80 20 split it's really up to you sort of like how you want to name the splits and what the ratios are the ratios are basically just integers that sum up to 100 and for instance then you could have for deep learning framework train test validation and then make it for instance 70 15 15 and you have your um, MS Coco data sets and basically all these three and then um, you just need to configure your deep learning framework to use these um, respective data sets and that's it and you can build models and once you are adding more and more data you can basically just rerun the pipeline here and generate a new data set and then compare basically the performance of your models with the added data Thank you and good luck.